What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. In this video, we're going to talk about how to study for USMLE Step 2 CS. So if you watched the other video on how to study for CK, I hope it helped you out. It was like 20 minutes long, sorry, but there was just a lot of stuff to talk about. I tried keeping it succinct. Um, I don't like videos over 10 minutes, but things happen. This video is going to be much shorter. So Step 2 CS. Um, you don't study for it the same way like you do step two CK. Uh, CK was use a U world, you know, use one QBank U world in one book. Do the U world carefully. Throw it in the book. Review the book later, and you're done. Um, step two CS, which is clinical skills, is a little bit different. Um, so I live in California, and there's like places you have to go to to do your CS exam. Mine was in Los Angeles. That's the closest one. Number one thing I'm gonna tell you for step two CS. Book that reservation to like, you know, your appointment at a location early. Um, I did, like my school forces you to do it early because I guess there have been cases of people not being able to get a spot or they have to fly, you know, across country to get it in somewhere else. So, you know, the moment you know, you know, where you want to, you know, when you want to take your CS, just book a spot for it, pay the fee. It's going to be exorbitant, of course, um, but just get a location close to wherever you are. And you know, just because you don't, the last thing you want to do is like fly out. I mean, I've heard stories, man. You, people flying out, staying at a hotel and taking CS somewhere totally random. Like that's not fun. If you can take it somewhere close to you, just make your life easier. All right. Step two CS, the format, read about it online. It's not hard. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, do obvious things. Let's talk about strategy. So how do you study for step two CS? It's really not that hard. Uh, most schools will have what's called like, you know, during your third years and even your first and second, will have a, what are called OSCEs, or these absor um, observed clinical encounters. Um, I think my school had probably one for almost every core rotation during third year. So you get used to the idea of, you know, working in this environment of seeing standardized patients with concerns and interviewing them and doing physical exams. So that stuff is kind of basic to your training. Um, I can't review that here in the video because that's kind of weird. Um, you know, during your first and second and third years, you know, you've learned, you know, how to work up patients, how to ask the right questions. Um, how to do appropriate exams, how to interact appropriately, and how to write notes. You know, that's kind of your medical training. But, you know, you can't just walk in there blind and think I'll be fine because you do kind of need to strategize a little bit and you do need to review. So I only, so I took step two CS, um, I think a week after taking step two CK. And I'd recommend that because once you've, you know, you're studying for step two CK, you're kind of fresh with all this stuff in your mind of diagnoses and, um, you know, the questions you're curious about. So, you know, in a way, step two CS is like a real life of step two CK, where instead of reading a question about, you know, a little paragraph about a patient, you'll actually encounter them and do the, do your own exam and see your own labs. Um, so that's my recommendation. Take step two CS right after CK. Uh, it'll just make things easier and you, you won't have to review any kind of real, um, you know, medicine because you'll be fresh right off of it. What you should review is only one, I looked at one book. I don't, I can't like pick it up and show it to you guys like I normally would. Link down below of the book um, on Amazon or wherever you want to, you want to buy it. Um, I just used one book. It was called First Aid for USMLE Step 2 CS. Um, first Aid book. All that book does is just it has like case after case that you read through. It'll give you like a patient prompt. It'll tell you like what kind of questions you should probably ask and what kind of exam findings you could do and how you should write up your note and like your assessment and plan and kind of what you want to do. Um, and that's all I did. So I was fresh off CK, so I didn't really have to review like medicine per se, because you kind of know it at that point. And being fresh off of CK, you also kind of know a lot more probably than you do at a random time in your career. Um, and for CS, what, you know, the, the way that the day is structured, you'll present to a, um, like at a testing center, it's very serious. You know, you wear like, I mean, their security is pretty impressive. Um, but you come wearing professional attire. Look good that day, man. This is not a day where you want to slack off and look sloppy. You know, look good. You're going to be graded on professionalism, believe it or not. Um, so, you know, like as a guy, you know, have like iron clothes, iron shirt, nice tie, you know, crisp white coat. You got to bring your own um, stethoscope from what I remember. Yep. Um, if you don't have a white coat, they'll give you one. If you don't have a stethoscope, they'll give you one. Um, you can only use a basic stethoscope, no electronic ones. Um, I don't know why that rule is there. Again, don't get caught up on details. They say you can only use the basic one. Just bring, you know, a Lithman Cardiology 2, Lithman Cardiology 3, whatever you've been using. If you've only been using the electronic one, borrow a normal one from someone else. 
Um, I remember on my test day, someone showed up without a stethoscope and without a white coat, and it kind of it delayed the entire room because the whole group of people moves from one place to the next. So bring your own uh, white coat; you'll be more comfortable. If you have like emblems on your white coat about your school, they'll like cover it up actually because um, they want to keep it neutral. And bring a plain stethoscope, and they'll investigate it and just kind of look at it to make sure it's not weird. Um, so bring your own stethoscope, bring your own white coat. Look crisp, look clean, look sharp, um, ladies. Uh, just normal attire you always wear. You know, I've seen I, on test day I saw people wearing like you know appropriate length skirts and pants and like a blouse. And again, that's all I saw. Um, and for guys, just wear your shirt and tie. For both people, you know, just dress comfortable. It's gonna be a long day. You're gonna be seeing a lot of patients. It is like a stressful kind of anxiety day because you're being tested. There's a time constraint. You know, there's, you know, it's like a test. So you're gonna have that sense of anxiety. The last thing you wanna do is keep doing this because your collar's too tight or your shirt's uncomfortable. Just dress normal, comfortable clothes, clean, sharp. So during the test day, that's the last thing on your mind. The reason why I liked that, um, is, you know, that first step, I mean, sorry, that uh, first aid for USMLA Step 2 CS is that in the beginning, it kind of talks about this stuff. It gives you a bit of an overview about what exam day is going to be like, how the test is structured. Of course, you can just Google that, but um, it's kind of nice how it's in there and it kind of gives you some tips about bring your own stuff, don't forget it. Um, you don't want to be that guy who shows up without a stethoscope or a white coat and holds everyone up because it just kind of adds more stress to the day. Um, so once you guys get all in there and they kind of number you up and get you organized, you'll go into the testing center, they'll make you put all your stuff away. So you can't have any phone keys or anything on you. Um, they'll like give you cubbies and stuff. So all you have is your stethoscope and your white coat and like a name, a, a number badge, not even a name badge. So like you're a number for that day. It's kind of weird. Um, and you're put like outside of a door, you got to stand all kind of weird and awkward and then they refer to you as doctor all day, which is kind of fun. And then they say, you know, doctors, please, you know, enter the room. And there will be like a piece of paper outside of the door. You will read the case prompt. So the nice thing about that first aid book is it prompts you just like this. It'll write a prompt and you will read it just like how it is on a real test day. So you'll read it. They'll say like, this is such and such patient. Um, they've got this chief complaint. They're here today to see you. Um, and if there are any labs or anything, they'll list them. But for the most part, it's kind of like a outpatient environment for the most part um, where there's a little bit of a description and you just go see the patient. And from there, it's like open game. This is where it gets fun uh, because in the first aid book, as you just read through all the cases, that's all the studying I did. I just like read through all the cases and became familiar with what kind of things um, could come to the door. And I think like four of my friends took it with me around the same time and all of us had cases that were like, oh yeah, we kind of read that in the first aid book. So maybe they repeat them, I don't know, but read the first aid book, you'll get familiar with a bunch of cases. Most things are bread and butter, they're not gonna give you a zebra, obviously. Um, and so when you go in on the test day, you will be, you will just have read a bunch of cases from the first aid book, so you'll be quite comfortable and you'll you know, hopefully be fresh off of CK, so you'll kind of remember your medicine. So you walk in there and you start interviewing the patient, the interesting thing is these people are good actors they bring in. They, they, they don't set up the exam to make it easy for you. They set it up with inherent hurdles. Like I remember one of my patients, you know, I'm not gonna obviously give the whole thing away because I'm sure US Emily will be really, really pissed if I do because I'll be violating a code. But the point is like these patients will act. So like a patient could be angry, you know, and they could be difficult to talk to. Um, don't necessarily take that as yourself. That could be part of the thing or it could be you, uh, you know, but just be ready. Um, you know, like the first aid book says, one of your questions or one of the cases could be a phone conversation with someone over the phone asking you for advice, or they could tell you you're in like a different setting. So I'd really recommend just reading that book, uh, the first aid book, review all the cases, do it quickly. You don't need to like get all the nitty gritties. You can figure it out on the spot, you know, get in there, see the patient, be appropriate, be pleasant, ask, questions, um, you know, irrespective of how the patient acts, if they're kind of like short and brunt with you, or if they're really friendly and talkative, you know, these are all things they're probably testing. So, you know, if they're talking too much, gently, you know, kind of ask your questions and, you know, don't let them just talk because it is time limited. Um, do your exam, do all the things the book tells you and you remember from your OSCEs, you know, stethoscope always on the skin, not over clothing. Um, 
when you walk in, wash your hands, shake the patient's hand, you know, all that kind of stuff. So lots of basic stuff from step two um, that you'll read in the book and you probably remember from Roski's. After you're done talking to them and getting the history and the physical, you say goodbye. Again, you shake hands, maybe you wash hands, you know, just do whatever the book says. I don't remember anymore. Um, you walk out and then you're on a computer now and you got to type up a note like, um, like an HPI, the physical exam findings. And then it's, it could say things like, uh, what kind of labs do you want to order or what's your next step, you know, whatever. Again, the nice thing is all this is somehow magically put into that first aid book. So all you got to do is read that first aid book. If you haven't got the theme about this video, it's familiarize yourself with the outlay of the day and whatever cases you see in that step two CS book and the rest will be fine. If you have like your current level of understanding of how to interview patients and how to do exams and how to like think a basic workup, you will be fine knowledge based on exam day. And if you review the book, you'll be like familiar, familiarized with a bunch of cases that'll most likely show up or some derivation of them or cases you can just figure out on the spot and you'll be fine. So really not that hard guys. Once you've done step two CK, you're gonna be in like a good mood, you'll be done. Uh, you'll have all this fresh knowledge, you're gonna enter into step two CS. Hopefully you registered early, you'll get a spot close to where you live. You walk in there, you're familiar with a bunch of cases because you read that first aid book. Um, you know, you brought your stethoscope and your white coat, you're comfortable all day, they'll feed you lunch, don't worry. Um, you see your patients, you know, you're kind of familiar again because you read the book and you're like, oh, I, I know how this kind of works. They're going to tell me a prompt to read. I go in there. I can expect anything. It'll be very real like. I'll do a history. I'll do an exam. I come out and I write my note. And that's it. You do a bunch of those and the day's over. It's a long day. It's, you know, it's a little bit tiring, but that's all guys. It's not complex. Don't let people stress you out. Um, do you need to be a super fast typer? No, you need to be a normal fast typer. I don't know what that means, but you just got to be a normal typer. If you're super slow, um, and I mean like super slow, you should, you know, you obviously know that and you should work on it, but you do need some degree of normal typing skills to work on the computer interface for writing notes. Nothing's handwritten. It's all computer. Um, and so it's not the bad of exam. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below in the comments. As always, check out the Facebook page we have. You guys are doing a great job of keeping the community strong and talking to one another. I hope this video helps, guys. I hope it takes off some of that strap of Step 2 CS. And as always, enjoy your studies.